Yeah, man, I was fighting a murder case. And um, a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people do know about it. A lot of people had mistaken in my name as saying I was telling them about the shit and all kind of shit, hating on me, but I'm still here. I be in my set every day. My OG homies love me. My homies move with me. We had to take a package deal and shit. And um, I was blessed, man. Like Boosie, I beat that shit. I probably gotta go turn myself in and do like a year, three years probation and shit. Me and my other crime, got the same. Um, my big homie, he got the three years probation and he had to do a year, but he time served because he stayed in. I bailed out. And my other little homie, he just took 26. So he'll do like 22. Package deal. So I don't see where the snitching came in at. You feel me? I learned a hell of a lesson, man. Like, you could be at the wrong spot at the wrong time and lose your life. Like, you could, your life could be in jeopardy at any given time, like, taken away from you for nothing, you know what I'm saying? And that shit is crazy how the system is set up to where they force you sometimes to make these guys take deals. You know what I'm saying? Make them sit in the county jail for so long, knowing they don't have nothing on you, and you so tired of that shit, so hell yeah, you, you want to take the deal, and that's fucked up. My lesson was, man, to just stay out the way. Cause I'm, I'm, I can't mix the street shit with the music shit. Cause the street shit can take me away from this music shit, which is holding my goals. Look, you ain't gotta have shit to do with nothing. But if you were part of a murder case of a family, what you think? They gonna think, hell yeah, fuck that nigga. You know what I'm saying? He was there. They charging you with the shit. So yeah, a nigga have to deal with that shit too when I see them or when I run into them in traffic, I don't know how they gonna take it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this nigga basically beat it. You know what I'm saying? So, shit like that, I still gotta look out for and other than that, but, you know, so I still send my condolences to that family, you know what I'm saying, for their loss, because I had nothing to do with it. And it hurt me for me to lose somebody in that way, too. My bill came down from two million to 575,000. So, they was charging me with murder when I first got down. So that's what had the two million dollar bond on me. They, they didn't have shit on me. They knew I didn't do no murder, so they dropped it to conspiracy just for being there. After the fact was saying that I helped, now I helped this guy get away from the scene. So when it came down to 575,000, I was able to, you know what I'm saying, make a move because I already had bread put up. My sponsor, Spitarillo's, Jeezy, really looking out, really fucking with me because he flew me out there to Atlanta and I stayed out there for a year and, you know what I'm saying, and we built a bond. So. That's how I was able to come up with that and how make that work. How many did it take while you were in custody in the county before your bail came down from the... Um, close to three months. It's just me leaving my kids and shit, my family. That's only little shit in, in my music. <clears throat> it like put a hold to this shit just a little bit. And I thank God, you know what I'm saying, it ain't for no years or nothing, but it just put a hold to a it li a little bit because I'm anxious to put this record, all this shit. And, uh, Shit, other than that, man, I'm ready to go up in there. I'm smoking all night. I'm working. I'm with the best niggas in the game. <clears throat> I'm a fan of this nigga, G Malone, you feel me? So how did y'all two come together? Really, I seen a nigga on the internet. Oh, yeah. And I hit the nigga payback, and I was like, hey, that nigga raw. Like, I, I liked his raw energy. To me, like, rapping, he was just cool. But I could see he wanted it. I could see that in his face. He was like, yeah, I like that. I, I fuck with niggas and I can see that hunger. Like, niggas getting this shit, man, and telling nigga to rap. Niggas don't want to rap. Nigga playing. You can see he wanted it. I can see the hunger. You feel me? And that, that's it for me. That's selling. I hit a couple of couple of my niggas from around the area, and I was like, yeah, he from over here, fish official. So I was like, all right, for sure. Like, I got to pay back. I was like, hey, I want to meet this nigga, man. That nigga sound cool. And I told him that day, I was like, hey, my nigga, we gonna do some shit. My whole connection to Big Payback, he came to the set through his brother, Flirt, and uh, he looked for me. He, he believed in my music. He believed in my grind. So he came to fuck with me. We did the Heart and Pain videos together. 
And my first real video was with Big Payback. And we shared fan bases. And he just believed in me and kept fucking with me. And you know what I'm saying? We did, we did that collaboration. I just never put it out. I'm seeing it on there and he rapping. But um, yep, rest in peace to Big Payback. That was a big bro. Everybody got big respect and love for him. Then nobody want to fade him, see him from the hands. That's why, you know what I'm saying? They did him dirty like that, you know what I'm saying? That's why I tell you, Alex, every homie ain't your homie. Uh, we on the east side of South Central. Um, this is South Park, home of the Avalons, the five Trey Avalon gangsters. And you cool with them? Yeah, hell yeah, these are my brothers. Real tight, I fucks with them all day. This big can, big payback candles and shit. It's kind of like we had last night. And uh, people still up here just showing they love and burning the candles, keeping them lit for them, letting them know, you know what I'm saying? We ain't forgot about them. He believed in my music, homie. He believed in me. So, you know what I'm saying? I gotta keep going. We gotta keep the movement going, you know what I'm saying? And I won't say all the pressure on me, but shit. Right now, I'm him, you know what I'm saying? Of the gangster car with this music shit, so I gotta keep it going for payback. Now, there's a lot of people saying that Big, big Payback was a big shit talker. You know, he had beefs with Bosco. I'm a big and, shit talker. And, um, but he had, he had put songs out against people. Yeah, I got you songs out too. Comes back? Yeah, hell yeah, it comes back. But like, we live that life. So you gotta expect what you got coming. You can't be tipping up and getting caught slipping. Sometimes in situations like Big Payback, he had different niggas coming at him, like Crips and Bloods. So with the Bosco situation and the 40 Glock situation. So, you know, it's like, and then not only that, he was on his own homies. He was pressing their lines, like, in his raps, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, shit, when you're a big nigga like that, you could do that. When there's no guns, it could be the tiniest nigga they come gonna shoot a giant. And it probably was a nobody that killed my nigga. A nobody, my nigga. Back in my day, it wasn't like today, you know. It's mostly killing and, and, and you know. But anyway, I'm glad things have changed for my son. You know, once he finished this little time that he have, he can get out and move on with his life. So you already went inside? Yeah, I went to go check in and shit. I gotta go back up there. You gotta go up there right now? Yeah. Um, are you gonna be able to come back out or that, this is it? No, this is it, man. Oh, man. I'm this is it, Alex, man. This is the last time you finna see me, man, till I get back out. And um, you ready? Hell yeah, I'm ready, man. I mean, Mentally, physically. What did you have to do? Like, uh, did you have to take care of like yourself? Tell me some preparation you got to do before you turn yourself in. Shit, man, smoke a whole lot of motherfucking weed. <laughs> Sit back, think, and you know what I'm saying. Pray and hope that everything go well while you're in the inside, so you'll be able to make it home. You feel me? But shit, I'm good. My kids good. So you know what I'm saying. I just thank God. Your sister and mom are inside already. No, I'm waiting for them to come right now. Oh, they didn't. They, you wait. You gonna wait out here? Or you gonna shit, wait? Shit, I'm going. I gotta go back up because they might just call me. You feel me? Oh, okay. Where are they at? Um, they should be pulling up, man. They said they was on the freeway and shit. So how'd you get up here? I'm, I'm with my girl. Oh, okay. Yeah, we drove and shit. And where's she at? She already up there waiting. Oh, okay. So, um, real quickly, um... We thank you right now that you'll keep a hedge of protection around this young man. And Lord, wherever he go, wherever you lead and guide him, you said the righteous man puts this an order by you, God. Let the young men see through, see you through him. In Jesus' name, Jesus we name. pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Nice meeting you. See, man, you never know, man. See, good things always come to those who wait. You feel me? All right, my last thing is, uh, you know, the county's unpredictable, man. People be underestimating the county. They think about this all about the pen. But the county's where it really pops off. Yeah, that shit worse than the pen, man. That's where it ain't no control, no structure yet. That's where it all is. It's what goes down, a lion den, it's the pit of hell. So you gotta be mentally ready to go up in this motherfucker and have you a program, you know what I'm saying? I'm going up in this motherfucker grimy, you see me. Shit, I've been in the studio working and going on with my life and my career, man. So now I'm finna go up in here and do knock this little shit out. Hello? Shit, 
See? What'd they say? I gotta get up there right now. My the lawyers. Yeah, I'm on my way. Hello? Hey, Alex. Love, my nigga. Respect. 2 1, man. I'll see y'all when I get back out. Hey, I'm gonna dedicate that little boosting to y'all, man. That um, I'm coming home. Pray for me. I, I didn't feel good about it, you know, because I raised my kids up in church. You know, me and their dad, we were strict on them. We sheltered them. We didn't let them do too much of, of getting out, you know. So, they it is what it is. They got around the friends and just got wild out there, you know. But um, his dad, Big Soda, he's a, he's a well-known... Yes, gang member. Yes, he he's a, is. He's a reputable from over there, Yes, he? he's a reputable from a Trey gangster. Yes, he is. And um, what was it like being in a relationship with him? Uh, we, we had our ups and downs in our relationships. He was going and doing his little thing, you know. And I was home trying to raise my kids, you know, as being a mother, you know, trying to keep them from this kind of activity. But it didn't work, it didn't happen. So I have to let them make their own choices. Alex, what's happening, baby? Just uh, out here seeing you all. Hey, explain what happened the last time you came to court, because it doesn't make sense on yeah, camera. Uh, basically, the DA didn't come the last time. So they had gave me nine days over for the DA to come back. They had to um, calculate all my credit time before I bailed out. So that's what we finna do today. And um, they gonna take me this time, you know what I'm saying? So. How did you feel when they told you last week to come back next week? I was kind of happy because I was still able to be with my family, but I was mad because it was dead time that I could have been knocking out, you feel me? But other than that, I'm still blessed, man. How you doing though, you all right? Oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Walked in here, man, and uh, knocked this little shit out to all my fans. I love y'all. Thank y'all for y'all support. I love y'all, the ones that stayed down for me, that didn't believe the rumors. Y'all A1 with me, man, and I'm going to grind it out for y'all. This is my year. So I will not leave y'all out. Believe that. To all my real homies, salute y'all. Far West. All sides. You already know. All states. You know what's up. I was very disappointed that... The judge denied my request to take a camera in the courtroom. So if I would have got that request granted, I wouldn't be here explaining none of this stuff. Uh, the judge went through all his conditions, all the fines he has to pay, uh, how much time credit he has, and, and all the, the details of the deal that he agreed to. Now this was a serious case because initially, Lil Sodi and some of the guys from his neighborhood were charged with a murder. Then they ended up charging Lil Sodi with accessory to murder, saying that he was the, the getaway driver. And then he just took this deal, I forget what the specifics of the deal was that he's being convicted of, but because he was present, the DA decided to charge him. And it turns out that Lil Sodi most likely had nothing to do with the homicide that took place back in 2012. Uh, definitely one of his homeboys was the trigger person. And he ended up getting, I think he ended up getting like 25 years in this same case where Lil Sodi was a co-defendant. So I, I think that Sodi is pretty, pretty fortunate because it looked like they was trying to give him minimum 10 years or 15 years and I think as the evidence started to un unravel itself it started to become more apparent that that Sodi was there but wasn't a participant in the homicide so he, he still has to do time which to me I think the guy should have just been released uh, but he you know a lot of these guys they're fortunate to say I'll do one to three because they're looking at ten and that's where we're at today where he's very happy to do this one-year sentence, where at the end of the day, I think all the, the charges against Sodi should have been dismissed. And little Sodi was in there smiling. He was, he was hugging his daughter. He, uh, it was, it was kind of sad to see him there hugging his kid and kissing and the bailiff and saying, all right, it's time to go, it's time to go. I was like, man, that's for a little kid to have to see their dad go off in handcuffs 
to go through some time is it's not pleasant. It's not even pleasant for me to sit there and, and look at that. But you know that's the lifestyle that they're in. You know this is not this is probably something that happens hundreds of times a day in courts across America. But his spirits was up, and since he's got 80 days credit, he feels that he's probably going to be getting out pretty soon. By me doing a lot of jail time and running into these guys and earning their respect and they earning my respect and love, I'm like, shit, why I can't be like this on the street? You know, and then a lot of niggas be scared of these niggas too. You know, you got a snitch nigga that's quick on the trigger, you know, a lot of niggas gonna be like, oh, he ain't tell on me.